This is the fourth and last part of my parents and my journey to Japan. It was inspired by my mother's book that has now been translated into Japanese. We want to find out more about Japan and my family's time there from 1932 to just before Pearl Harbor in 1941. But first, some important messages. Before we left Kyoto, we visited the Imperial Palace, the place where emperors are enthroned. The Japanese monarchy is the oldest hereditary monarchy in the world. The Japanese considered the emperors the living descendants of the gods who created Japan. Until Emperor Hirohito in 1946, under duress, denounced the false conception that the emperor is divine. But in fact, the emperor has rarely wielded real power in Japan. It is largely a symbolic role. Their time is rigidly organized by the imperial household agency. And although the emperor attends over 400 formal functions a year, unlike the UK royals, the imperial family remains largely out of sight. This rigid control has caused problems, not least the emperor's wife and the crown prince's wife suffering from depression. But during Kyoto's reign as the imperial city, from 794 to 1869, life has not all been sombre. A literary party is illustrated in this panel. It took place in the ornate palace gardens and required each guest to compose a small poem as his wine cup floated towards him along a miniature winding channel of water. There was a young man from Kyoto. Oh, maybe not. The Japanese royal family does seem to be beset with problems, not least a lack of male heirs. There is a shrine on a mountain at top overlooking the imperial palace that is there to protect it. It looks as though it has its work cut out. It was time to return to Tokyo. We were pleased to see the train had holy sanction. Looking out of the bullet train, or Shinkansen, as we hurtled through Japan at 186 miles per hour, I was struck by the constant ribbon of development, with small rice fields scattered in amongst the houses. In the background loomed tree-covered mountains. But the Japanese are not a mountain people. They prefer coastal plains and valleys. Most of Japan's 127 million people, factories, farmland, housing, and public facilities are crowded into approximately 20% of the total land area, making it the most densely populated country in the world. In Tokyo, that density of population is most obvious. But the megalopolis of 30 million people has also extended out to Ikebukuro, that in the 1930s, when my mother was born in Ikebukuro, was a leafy suburb. Rikkyo University, or St Paul's as it is also known, even though it is in Ikebukuro, still has the same English college look. My grandfather taught at the theological department, called the Shingakuin, at Rikkyo University in the 1930s. But towards the end of their time in Japan, he was not allowed to teach religion or thought and had to focus on the languages of Hebrew and Greek. Many of the original college buildings are relatively unchanged. Students don't change much either. The splendidly bearded founder would have had much to recognize. But not the theological department. That has changed. In fact, it's no longer at the same site, which is now a high school extending above and below the ground. This was the place my mother was born in 1936 and lived and played until 1941. We talked over the history with Bishop Igarashi and the president of Rikkyo University, Dr. Yoshioka. Uh, uh, all the picture of all, all 
Japan. Yes. Oh, yeah. Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We took the underground ring road to see the site of the new theological college. The cars have changed a bit too. Oh, that's you. Yes. That's me. <laughs> We got a chance to look at some of the old records. We discussed matters with the college principal, Reverend Sasaki. The college is not doing quite as well as it was even in my grandfather's day, when there were at least 15 students in each year. Now there are only six in the entire college seeking ordination into the church. The college has had to sell over three quarters of its land recently. The college's decline reflects a decline in the church in general. Less than a third of 1% of the Japanese population are Christians, and they have never come close to the scale of Buddhism or Shintoism. But even the established religions are struggling in the face of Japanese urbanization and the consequential breakdown of traditional family oriented social structures. The next day we went to Yokohama. First we walked through its thriving Chinatown. Despite Japan's historically fraught relationship with China, it invaded Manchuria in the 1930s and is currently in dispute with China over some islands, China has had a huge influence on Japan. Buddhism was a Chinese import in the 6th century AD. With it came Chinese writing, philosophy, a centralised form of government, a calendar, architecture, bronze casting, bridge building, sculpture. But each time it was adapted and given a Japanese flavour. We left the hustle and bustle of Chinatown to head down to the harbour. There, there was a particularly poignant memory for my mother, the Hakawa Maru. The ship that had sailed her and her family back to Japan from Seattle in 1938 after a furlough. A similar ship was to sail them to Seattle in 1941 to leave Japan. My mother is second from the right in the front row. The Hakaro Maru was a state-of-the-art ocean liner, launched in September 1929 to make the trip between Japan and Seattle. She had a reputation for service that combined splendid food and beautiful Art Deco interiors. First class children's room. No wonder she was nicknamed the Queen of the Pacific. The ship was so well restored, it was impossible not to get into the mood. Captain speaking, cruise to muster in the after smoking room at 1200 hours. Thank you. <laughs> Take you on the starboard bow. When my mother and her family left Japan in May 1941, they took a similar ship to the Hakawa Maru, the Hiei Maru. That was the last successful crossing of the Pacific by a Japanese ship and the Hiei Maru was sunk shortly afterwards. In her book my mother describes her leaving of Japan. We stood on the ship's deck looking back towards Japan and there they were on the quayside 
Furusawa-san, our armor, and Takahashi-san, our cook, two Japanese women in their kimonos with tears streaming down their faces. My mother was to spend the war in Toronto, Canada, in a country where her home, Japan, and its people were considered the enemy. We headed up the hill to the area of Yokohama called the Bluff. Historically a favourite place for Westerners to settle and to die. We took a rest in the Foreigners Cemetery. At Christchurch, a wedding had just ended. Weddings blend Western and traditional clothing. They do, of course, add Japanese tweaks to the ceremony, such as the ring relay, where the ring is passed via every guest's hands before it gets to the bride. Weddings are a multi-billion yen business in Japan. Every hotel seems to promote itself as a location for weddings. Our hotel in the Madzu even had a chapel on its roof. These are often pseudo-Christian weddings, with the officiator being an unordained foreigner in a robe. But we hadn't come to Christchurch for a wedding. We'd come for tea. A good old mix of scones, cucumber sandwiches, and games. <laughs> we headed back to Tokyo and saw a shop, possibly run by a descendant. Last night at the Hojo's. So what is this? Camera. And what is it in in uh, Japanese? Layu. 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 <coughs> and Layu. in uh, English? Chili sauce. <laughs> Chili sauce. Thank you very much. Was the kendo stick a hint to leave? The Hojo's kindness, friendship, and hospitality had been as ever amazing. We headed to Rikkyo Chapel for the Sunday service. The organ had recently been fitted by Kenneth Tickle & Company Limited of Northampton. Mum did a book signing at the end of the service. Afterwards we followed a troupe of Japanese dancers. To the kindergarten my mother had attended, or Geogakuen. It is a Frank Lloyd Wright building and has been designated an important cultural property that has preserved it. My mother recalled what she had done at school. Um, looking after the rabbits, marching around with musical instruments and learning to look after ourselves. In what respects? Rubbing ourselves dry with towels, <laughs> brushing our teeth, <laughs> Very good. washing our faces. <laughs> really? The three R's we're talking about here? <laughs> I don't think we embarked <laughs> on those. <laughs> okay. A Mrs. Honey founded the school in 1921. She was an extremely enlightened educator 
and believe strongly that life itself is education and that pupils should spend a pleasant time learning in a serene atmosphere. Despite this philosophy, the picture on the front of my mother's book is very interesting. It shows the Geogakuin pupils. My mother is back row, second from the left. Her elder brother is standing at the front. Notice that only the Western children are wearing coats, which suggests it was cold, but the Japanese children were expected to endure some hardship so they could empathise with the Japanese soldiers who at that time were fighting in China, in Manchuria. Rabbit keeping for girl. <laughs> <laughs> How was that, Martin? Oh, rabbit wash. Okay, let's have it. <laughs> the school itself has long since moved, but the buildings are still proving popular. In particular, of course, for weddings. School's over, woo! <laughs> Time to go home, it's holidays. Even on a hot day, this doesn't sound refreshing. Our trip to Japan draws to a close. It has been a fascinating journey into the past, but also into the present and potentially the future. My mother has written a book about two Japans, the peaceful Japan and the military Japan. It talks about the growth of nationalism and the disastrous consequences to Japan and the world and of course the disruption to families like her own. The translation of the book comes at an interesting time in Japanese history. The current Japanese Prime Minister, Mr Abe, has strong nationalist views. He wants to revise Japan's pacifist constitution and raise the profile of its military. And there's rising tensions over a cluster of islands in the East China Sea claimed by both Japan and China. Could military Japan rise again? But my experience of Japan has definitely been peaceful. The hospitality, kindness and friendship we have received in Japan has been amazing. In the two and a half weeks we have been in Japan, We've experienced many Japans, to name a few. Unfamiliar Japan. Technical Japan. Weird Japan. Golden Japan. Tacky Japan. Punctual Japan. Religious Japan. Coexisting Japan. Zen Japan. Beautiful Japan. It has definitely been a tale of many Japans. The Japanese venerate their ancestors. Indeed, many have shrines in their houses with pictures of their forebears. It keeps the ancestors part of the present by visiting places from my grandparents' time. They have become more part of my present, and I feel in some way I have been venerating my ancestors through this trip.